This is the Scottish and North Irish Yeomanry, currently made up of three squadrons of reservists. They've been paired up with regular soldiers from the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards, and together they will carry out a light cavalry role under new plans to restructure the army. Here comes the engagement. This is the newest unit to be created under army restructuring and it's the first time the Scottish North Irish Yeomanry have worked with their regular paired unit, the Scots Dragoon Guards, and it's all about training and developing the light cavalry role. So the Scottish North Irish Yeomanry, new regiment, with the R Wimmick, which they've, they've had it for a while, uh, uh, with Scots Dragoon Guards, very old, very distinguished regiment in the British Army, but with new vehicles. This is actually quite exciting and for me, um, having both of these units under command, uh, but seeing them not only competing against each other, but actually working alongside each other and integrated with each other is exactly what we're after. Both the reserves and the regulars have been equipped with new vehicles. The Scots Dragoon Guards have now re-rolled from the Challenger 2 to the Jackal, and the reserves have been equipped with the Wimmick Land Rover. Your drivers, drivers this side, commander, and you're going to run the top. And this is very different to what you've been using before. Can you talk us through the differences? Well, before we were uh, armoured infantry, we had uh, CBRT. Uh, so to move from CBRT to light, light, light infantry onto the Arbonic, it has been a big change. I mean, it's, it is a very good bit of kit. And uh, it's obviously, it is the way forward. Uh, the armour and the, the track vehicles, it's, they're a lot harder to maintain. These are quite easy and they're nimble. You get through quite a lot of areas, covered a lot of bit of the ground, uh, easier to hide. Uh, doesn't disturb. You can use little tracks, go off road, and you don't dig up where there's tracks, dig everything up, and you had to cover all that as well, cover your tracks into where you were going. So, uh, they are a lot easier to manoeuvre around there. Traditionally, we've uh, conducted a big exercises over in Canada um, and also, uh, of course, here in Germany. And now, we're, uh, one of the main changes is the change of mindset. We are now on a much lighter vehicle, uh, we can operate at much bigger distances for much longer, and um, that will probably lead us to very interesting places in the future. Nine regulars from the Scots Dragoon Guards were selected to come to Germany to oversee and advise on the exercise as the reserves are taken through two weeks' worth of training, including this, their annual crew test. So the first exercise was timed and marked and the majority of the guys managed to get a good pass, either sixes or fives actually, um, and you don't get any higher than a six really. Uh, and then the annual crew test we've just all completed and again the uh, scores were really high. Um, so the boys have done really well. One vehicle on the range had both reserves and a regular soldier on board, working as a formed unit for the first time. No, I mean clearly we're both Scottish so that helps, that does help, <laughs> um, having a bit of a local uh, connection with that. Um, it, no issues, everyone's trained be it regular or reserve to, to a very similar standard. So you can rely on that and you know that the person that's in your vehicle is going to do the job they've been employed to do. So um, you don't have any reservation with that side of thing. So it's really just a case of getting on with each other. Uh, so there isn't any issues, to be honest. It's actually been really good. Uh, the integration has been going awesome. Uh, I know people like to speculate about the TA, but no, they're just as, every bit as good as the regular. If not, some of them are a lot better.
This is the final part of the exercise for the reserves before they head back to the UK and they've come here to CAT where they're carrying out simulation training. Each pod simulates a vehicle and within that pod we'll have a, a driver which is this guy here, that's the driver. We'll always have a dismount. Um, this guy can either be deployed with a weapon system such as javelin or a sniper rifle. And here we have the commander. Um, he will uh, command his whole trip. He will go to the map. Uh, particular mission he's on at the minute. They're all moving into a form up point and from there they will overlook a, uh, a river. Uh, their mission today is to find a crossing point at that river and hopefully they'll lay off, uh, watch for any enemy movement um, and sort of protect the safe, uh, safe passage across should uh, rear echelon or rear movement come up. All information will be related back to their SHQ and then it's from SHQ then to plan and send them out. You can actually see the levels that the guys are starting to achieve, which is very, very good. Uh, three, two, Roger. I mean, as a reserve soldier, this was never, never for us before, but now the reserve army. Um, the training has just stepped up a notch and it's very, very good. So exciting times for a reserve soldier. I'm running them through a zero to hero exercise, very much CT1, CT2 uh, level of training. But for a lot of these guys, they've never been on vehicles before, they're not qualified commanders. It's a good taster for them to build on in the future. And particularly as the regiment is building and we're putting a new squadron together, etc., etc., if we can get. Uh, if we get enough expertise and enough people enjoying themselves out in these exercises, we'll get more people involved. But it'll hopefully help our recruiting as well and our retention. The Scottish DG troop, which is working with them, um, have integrated really well. Uh, there's a lot of banter between the guys, uh, and there's a bit of competition going on as well. But you know, are we as good as the regulars? Um, and of course, the regulars they want to drop their guard as well because they don't want to be outshone by the uh, reservists. So it's been working really well. I didn't know when I took over the squadron, my squadron, and therefore part of this regiment, how good the guys would be. Having lived in the regular army for the last 20 years, I had a picture of the reservist community. I think actually to an extent some of those preconceptions have been blown out of the water. Um, they are good, but they don't get as much training time as regular soldiers do. But they are motivated. They want to be here, they want to work, and they want to learn. And so they are, their progression is much bigger and, uh, and faster than the Scots DG guys because they started at a much higher level in the first place. Uh, it's two weeks away from home. For some of them that's quite a daunting prospect. You know, coming to Germany, for those of us who are regular that's just normal business, but for some guys who have never left Ayrshire, you know, coming out to Germany to go and do an exercise like this is uh, it's a big deal for them. And uh, from what I've seen from the guys, they're having a great, great time. And I hope it means that next year when we run annual camp, there'll be more and more guys wanting to come across uh, and get involved. It's been very good. I, I've been in 22 okay. years now. Um, when I first joined, we, weren't, we didn't actually see much of them in our training day to day. And now to see them in amongst us, just as normal, is just really good. I enjoy it very much. They're, they're very helpful um, and it's been good working with them. We come on the cat and we're obviously progressing quite well. We try to go from like enough hero to zero, or zero to hero, I mean, quite a short space of time. And it's been a new concept and we're trying to adapt to the integration with Scottish DGs, it's working quite well. Welcome to us with open arms they have and we've been really enjoying and it's good to have their experiences and helping us um, with what we're going to be doing with them in the future. It's my first time, okay it's only um, simulation but it's learned how to command the vehicles and um, it's just been good, it's getting hands on onto it now and I'm looking forward to going out into the, uh, into the real life now and playing about with them so yeah. So, that's been enjoyable now. Myself, it's been very, very enjoyable too. For the younger ones there, it's been a real good experience for themselves too, to get actually hands on, instead of just saying, that this is what the kid is, and this is what it does. So. Really good, it's, it sort of simulates real life sort of stuff, and gets you sort of ready to do it in real, when you get on the fake for real. The reserves will now head back to their regular jobs in the UK. 
but these two weeks have prepared them for working as a unit with the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards on operations anywhere in the world.